This tool tip was made possible by support from KiwiCo, who makes wonderful educational build kits to introduce kids of all ages to the concepts in STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and math. A few months ago, I built their ukulele, and I gotta tell you, this, this is a great experience to give to a kid. We'll be talking more about KiwiCo later on in the video, but right now, let's get to one of my favorite tools. Hey everybody, Adam Savage here in my cave with a show and tell, a, well, it's a tool tip, really. There's a lot to show and to tell, but it's basically about tools. And it is about, well, the humble scissor. One of the most common questions I get from makers, experienced and new, is what are the mission critical tools I should have in my shop? And it's always a tough question to answer because tool usage is really specific to each maker. But a few things are on every single list. A hammer, some screwdrivers, some pliers, needle nose and otherwise, and some scissors. And <clears throat> when Norm asked me to do a show and tell on scissors in my collection, I realized scissors is a rabbit hole. And we're gonna go a fair bit down the rabbit hole today to talk about scissors. Because while it is a single name, it describes a whole panoply of different solutions to the same problem and solutions for cutting different types of materials. And I'm gonna talk about how I kind of keep, maintain, utilize, store, and access the scissors in my cave. And we're gonna start with my favorite pair because they're gargantuan and gigantic, and that is this old turn of the century pair of Taylor's scissors. Um, these are amazing. They have these raised brass sides because they're tailor scissors, and I believe those actually help them slide in and out of parts of the cutting that they have to do. Um, this pair I purchased used at an antique mall somewhere in the Midwest, and then I actually spent some time with a high quality stone uh, restoring these. And that meant I took them apart, I stoned the two surfaces of these scissors to be as flat as I could get it. Um, I cleaned them, and when I cleaned them, you could actually see that the edges of the scissor is a substantively different metal than the rest of the scissor. I believe this is a, a, a pattern welded scissor blade where there's a harder steel welded to a softer steel back, which would be amazing. I'm not positive about that, but that's kind of what I feel like I can see. <laughs> These now work beautifully. Oh, there we go. Uh, yeah, um, they're really lovely to have and to hold and the way they fit your hand is something that like, I swear sometimes I feel like we lose this, that beauty because these just wrap around your hand. Um, and this is really what most of us think of when we think of scissors. They cut cloth, they cut paper, they're pretty straightforward, but they really, really aren't. Um, first off, you should know that one of the worst things you can do with a pair of scissors, or not the worst, but one of the things that will damage or dull scissors faster than anything else is paper. Seriously. Um, if you took a microscope and you could zoom all the way into the molecular structure of paper, what you'd find are these polymer chains of the pulp that make up the paper. And it's cotton and other stuff, and there's wood, and <clears throat> a lot of different things that make up paper. But basically what you should know is that those molecules are actually fairly, uh, 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 they have a high amount of abrasiveness to the blades of a scissor. So the first thing that I learned to do in my shop was to sequester scissors for paper and normal things and scissors for cloth. And so this is sort of like the, the high and the low. These are some Milwaukee scissors and Milwaukee was a sponsor on a couple of the shows that I produced for the Discovery Channel. And I really like the feel of the regular tools that Milwaukee makes. They're robust, they're solid, uh, they cut anything I've thrown at them. But these Kai Japanese scissors, these are like 75 bucks. And again, we'll include links to as many of these things as we can go and find in the comments below. Uh, but these Kai scissors are, it says, cloth or dye. I learned to put this on my cloth scissors. This is how I keep my scissors sharp in the cave. I don't sharpen them regularly because I don't need to because I only use this on cloth. I never, even for a second, 
cut paper with this. So they stay really, really nice and sharp. And these are probably the scissors I use more than any other pair in the cave because I do a lot more with cloth than I do with most other things. Um, but moving from your right to uh, your left, let's walk through some of these. These are some little Wiss work, work scissors. Uh, I really like the spring return, uh, especially in certain circumstances uh, when you're trying to get into difficult locations. Even the fact that the scissor has a loop and your hand can do this, sometimes the spring return is the kind of feedback you want when you're working through something. And I like having, obviously I like collecting tools and as a tool collector and borderline hoarder, or let's say high functioning hoarder, I look for reasons for my hoarding and it behooves me to have a lot of different options for my approach to cutting things. That's one of the reasons you see so many different kinds of scissors here. Um, these are frequently famously sold as EMT scissors. Uh, they have some classic features that they all share, a soft front so that you can go into someone's clothes and cut them off without stabbing them. That's useful. They also have serrated edges. I think famously these are shown on television, cutting through a penny or a dime. I have tried it, it works. I'm not gonna deface some US currency on this channel, but um, these are made by Magnum and here's a small and a large. And I very rarely have to use these, but I like having them on hand because they can do things that almost nothing else can. Here is a, another pair of, I think, spring return scissors, but these are made by uh, Klaus and they are titanium. Uh, they also happen to have a little snipper here in the side and again, this is also part and parcel of me just wanting lots of different options for cutting. Here's another titanium scissor. These are made by uh, Westcott. And I ended up with a bunch of pairs of these after one of the shows I did, and they seem to hold their edge well. One of the primary ways in which scissors in my collection deteriorate is that I cut sticky stuff with them and then I forget to clean them. And actually uh, this set of Milwaukee is a great example. This gummy here, that's gonna do nothing but harm your scissors ability to cut everything. And one of my shop practices I try and be better about is cleaning this off. So uh, just a little bit of acetone will usually take care of most anything you've got stuck on the scissor face there. Um, just toss a little bit on there, wipe it off. And you know, the thing about, it's specifically the sticky back of Velcro. That's the one that really gums up the scissors. It's highly tenacious. And once it's on that face, only cleaning it with acetone or, or, or some solvent is gonna get it off. Um, all right, let's see here. We've got some Mundi Mundial uh, scissors, uh, which I bought as some cloth scissors a few years ago. Somebody ended up using them to cut something else, so they just went into the regular scissor population. <laughs> Uh, another pair that is supposed to be great are Ginger, G-I-N-G-H-E-R, made out of Italy. And these are apparently very famous cloth scissors and they have a lovely action that the sharpen on them feels really nice and precise. Uh, these also hang on my sewing table as other cloth scissors to go with the Kais. Uh, these, I'm not sure what these are specifically for, but as soon as I saw them, I thought, man, the point at which I need scissors like this is the point I'll be really glad I spent the 12 bucks on these weird right angle scissors. I, I don't know what these are actually for. I mean, I guess you could use them for puppeting a stork if you wanted to. Um, they're certainly for getting access in a way that nothing else could. Uh, they allow you to make a cut without your hand being behind the line of the cut, which is a feature that, like I said, it's an option I might not need for years, but when I do, I'll be really glad I had the ability. I've already talked about the Milwaukee scissors. These are a standard pair of Scotch scissors. This is the brand I have in my house. I think we have five or six pairs placed in drawers all over. You, scissors are one of those things you can't have enough of, and they're always going missing. So uh, yeah, I have a lot. I hope you're enjoying the video. I'm here to remind you that this video is made possible by KiwiCo. KiwiCo's beautiful kits aren't just educational steam kits. Each one of them is an experience into and of itself. And I don't just mean that all the materials you need are in each box. When you take a bunch of raw materials and give them to a kid and they end up turning them into a bona fide object, there is no better way to wake them up to the possibilities of the entire world. 
KiwiCode teaches the skills of creativity, innovation, and problem solving in hopes of giving this generation of children the skills and mindset they need to make a better world tomorrow. KiwiCo wanted me to talk about my personal experience in building this ukulele kit, which I loved, but I started to ponder what if I had had this kit as a kid? And the answer is I kind of did. My dad and I built a ukulele together for me when I was like eight or nine years old. Um, I used it to air guitar to Frankie Valley. <laughs> we, we made the outside out of aluminum uh, roofing flashing and the faces out of some old plywood. And even though it barely played, it still radically altered my perception of what was possible in the making of things. And that's exactly what KiwiCo hopes to give with this kit. And I think they succeeded. It's an amazing kit. Now it's time for this special offer. If you go to kiwico.com slash tested, you can get 50% off of the first month of any of KiwiCo's subscription crates. Go get it now. Okay. Now back to the regularly scheduled tool tip. I recently picked up these. These are good grips scissors. And I must say I like most of the things that OXO good grips make. Um, one of the things I like about these is you can separate them for cleaning and also for sharpening, obviously. Uh, but again, I do very little sharpening of my scissors. Most of my keeping the scissors ready for what they have to do is about sequestering them into specific groups. Um, craft scissors is a whole nother zone. But a few years ago, I was replicating Indiana Jones Grail Diary, and on the front of it was a postage stamp. And I found a copy of the postage stamp, but how was I gonna get that classic postage stamp crenellated edge? Well, it turns out that postal, uh, craft edgers, sorry, craft edgers, makes a postal scissor that actually cuts the postage stamp pattern in paper. It, right? And they make, like, the probable first intersection we all have with non-standard scissor cutters is with pinking shears. That's the zigzag. Um, and these folks, craft edgers, make um, a a set of like 24 scissors, each one that cuts a different kind of pattern. And to be perfectly honest with you, they are somewhere in this cave and I am not sure exactly where. This is the only pair I found. I'll, I'll figure out where they are in the next couple of weeks. But um, for that specific kind of crafting, that is to me an invaluable thing to have on hand. Uh, these, I frequently look to the medical industry for interesting solutions, and this is, I thought it was a hemostat or a little alligator, but it actually is a pair of scissors. And again, this is one of those ones of like, that is a tiny little, like five eighths of an inch long blade way out at the end of a six inch arm. The point at which I need this, like when I'm making a ship in a bottle or something like that, and I think that's exactly where I found this, at a site that sells ship in a bottle kits. Um, the moment I need this, I'll be really glad I spent the whatever, 15 bucks. These are made by Micromart. Oh, they're probably more than 15 bucks then. Um, I really like these. These come also from the medical industry, but from uh, 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 like military triage. And I love these things. They have the same feature as these, these scissors, which is that soft, excuse me, that soft nose tip that medical scissors do for cutting stuff off of you. But they also have this hilarious bottle opener on the other side. And I'm a big fan of tools that do like two weird things. I just, I never considered cutting someone's clothes off them in an emergency going hand in hand with popping the bottle cap off a bottle of beer. But I guess once you've successfully saved a life, it's Miller time. Um, these are, who, who makes these? Carlin? Carlin, it looks like. Yeah, I found these on eBay. Look, every now and then I just end up go, I do a search for like weird scissors. I'm not kidding. That's totally a search term of mine. Um, I've covered the two cloth scissors. Ah, yes, tin snips. There are a lot of different versions of these. These are Ace Hardware's tin snips. Um, I have rarely found a significant difference between these. Uh, they all share the same features, which is a really heavy duty fat nose. And these are made, call them tin snips, because they're made for cutting metal. 
Um, I've got here a piece of 20 thousandths uh, brass, 20 thousandths. Uh, a sixteenth of an inch is about 60 thousandths. So this is a third of that. It's about 1 50th of an inch. And these tin snips can cut this stuff all day long. It's, uh, and, and you can cut to patterns. Um, these I would consider an indispensable maker tool to have. They are ludicrously cheap, especially at garage sales or on Craigslist as part of a tool lot. Um, people don't really ascribe a high value to these. You can probably pick up a pair for 10 bucks new, I'm guessing. Invaluable, absolutely you should have it. Um, here is a piece of steel and I'll cut this also with these tin snips and I can cut a fairly sensitive, you need, you need strength behind this. You can see I'm actually got them on the table and I'm pushing down into the table, but you can also see how much sensitivity I can bring. That was a good sound uh, to the cut. Absolutely. And I think this is also about 20 thou thick. Um, yeah, tin snips are completely uh, a vital one. The differences between these, sometimes they have a different angle of attack on the head. Sometimes they have a different angle of attack on the direction the head faces. And these are all about giving you uh, the right amount of access to the metal as you're cutting. Uh, Terry English told me that all 107 suits of armor he cut out for Excalibur were excavated out of sheets of aluminum using scissors just like this. I mean, when we were there, he was using a pneumatic cutter. Uh, uh, was it a pneumatic or electric cutter? I can't remember which, but it was like 500 bucks for this thing that cuts through metal. And there are many versions of that. They are outside the realm of this tool tip. Um, but suffice to say that <laughs> according to Terry English, you can make a whole suit of armor using just these. <laughs> Obviously, there's some post-processing of the metal after you've cut it out, but get these. Um, yeah, that was a bit fast and furious, but that is a total reasonable spectrum to take a look at in terms of how I use scissors uh, and how I keep them useful to me here in the shop. I'm always adding pairs, and there's another seven or eight pairs down there, but they kind of replicate a lot of what is here. This is definitely gonna be the tool you end up with the most versions of, I think, more than any, I mean, maybe a knife, like all the different kinds of knife blades we end up using as makers, but you can't have, you can't have too many scissors, lad. You can't have too many scissors. At least that's my operating instructions. Thank you guys for joining me for this tool tip. Happy cutting and remember, cloth or die. I'm Adam Savage in my cave and I will see you next time.